If Mars had the same environment as Earth, why did Mars end up a barren red planet while Earth continued to carry life? National Geographic published an article titled, Did Life on Earth Come from Mars? Mars, the planet fourth from the sun and known for its conspicuous red color, has fascinated man for thousands of years. By the end of 2018, there were eight active spacecraft either orbiting or investigating the surface of Mars. There are also private groups that boast they will be building the first colony on the surface of Mars. It's a human obsession that drives scientists, astronomers, explorers, and sci-fi writers mad. But why Mars? This passionate pursuit to discover life on the red planet may be fueled by something deeper than curiosity. It could be triggered by an ancient memory. If this is true, what is it we are trying to understand on the surface of Mars? The electric universe theory suggests that not only could there have been life on Mars, but it is one of the only planets that holds the most evidence that 10,000 years ago, an electrical encounter wreaked havoc on our current solar system. National Geographic published an article titled, Did Life on Earth Come from Mars? In the article, two scientists gather evidence that Mars had certain elements for early development of life that Earth seemed to be scarce of. Their theory suggests that a meteorite hit Mars and that the debris from that impact made its way to Earth's surface, carrying these elements we needed. This brings up two questions. If Mars had these necessary elements for life, could that mean that life existed on Mars already? And also, could this impact on Mars have been an electrical encounter with Earth and not a meteorite from space? Electric Universe unravels a riveting case for those questions. One of the big puzzles about the Earth has been its oceans because the hydrogen and oxygen that makes up the water in the oceans should have been, according to the standard theory, blown into the outer reaches of the solar system during the early phase of the sun's existence. And that was the argument for the formation of the gas giants. They're thought to be mostly the gases that were blown out from the inner solar system. The answer that they came up with is that the Earth suffered bombardment by comets, and comets brought water to the Earth after its formation and the other planets that were in place. This doesn't stand up because uh, now that we've actually looked at comets, they don't have the water that was expected. And of course, the electric universe explains that too, because the water is actually formed electrically from the minerals on the surface. When we've looked closely at comets, uh, they've shown they've got rocky surfaces. The simple answer is that the atmosphere and the oceans on the Earth were formed by this continual misting down of material being lost from Saturn. That would mean that Mars also had the same environment. That also indicates that we should expect that there was life on Mars at that period, and that even after all that devastation, perhaps someday we may be able to detect the fossils of life forms. If Mars had the same environment as Earth, why did Mars end up a barren red planet while Earth continued to carry life? The breakup of the system must have consisted of a series of episodes, uh, some of them violent and destructive, others more benign, which gave any life forms a chance to try and regroup and figure out what they could do to avoid <laughs> being wiped out the next time. And that also gives rise to this idea of the recurrence and uh, you know, predicting it's going to happen again, because in that era, the chances were pretty high. Each time these events occur, there would have been a change in atmospheric content, the amount of atmosphere, and those kinds of things. We know for certain that this also occurred on the Earth. On Mars being a smaller body, the changes would have been more dramatic, and it's possible that if there were people on Mars, they would have had to survive in a reduced atmosphere, for instance, find it difficult to breathe. 
These are the kinds of things that uh, one can speculate about and uh, try and form a picture of what these events must mean for living creatures on their surfaces. How is this explained using the Electric Universe model? Each of the satellites of Saturn, Mars and Earth in particular, would have had to find their new place in the solar system. Now, under the Newtonian model, of course, this would have been uh, impossible in the short time frame we've been talking about, you know, 10 to 12,000 years ago. In fact, it would have been impossible simply because having introduced chaos into the solar system, there's no way of restoring order. No simple way, some bodies would have been flung out of the solar system, others crashed into others based on the standard thinking. The Electric Universe model says that the bodies would avoid collisions and when they came close they would exchange electric charge which would change their mass, their gravity and therefore their orbit. So this is the mechanism that spaced all of the progeny of proto-Saturn at the various distances that we find them in the solar system. There's research to be done to understand how this achieves what is known as the Bode's relationship between the orbits of planets. There are things going on in the electric universe which are not considered at present, and that is there are resonances. There are resonances within subatomic particles, there are resonances within atoms, within biological systems, within crystals, at every scale. And in the case of the solar system, there is a gravitational resonance. If this resonance between planets caused massive damage on a once Earth-like planet, where can we find evidence of that? I think it's important to visualize the towering size of the planet Mars as it neared the vicinity of the Earth. It would have been many times bigger than the current moon. But as Mars moved closer to the Earth, you have to imagine unbelievable pyrotechnics in the sky, uh, certainly a lot of electromagnetic effects, a lot of auroral effects. Mars at its closest was about 40 times the diameter of the moon in the sky. You can understand the sheer fright and uh, awe of the ancient observers and the concern that the things that were happening around them were signals of the end of the world. It also explains the strange motivation for ancients to build huge rock structures with uh, rocks that we'd have difficulty moving with our modern equipment. And some of them are very rudimentary. Um, they appear mainly to have shielded from things falling from above. And that fits, of course, with all of the stories of uh, stones falling from heaven. The meteorites that fell were associated with lightning. They were called lightning stones. So the two together came together. The interplanetary lightning and the falls of rocks and stone and dust from the sky. And also that fits with the biblical accounts of the plagues of Egypt and so on. If you have a situation where Mars meteorites are falling on the Earth in tremendous abundance. It goes without saying that there's a possibility that Mars microorganisms eventually made their way to the Earth. One of the features that was recently discovered, once we learned what the composition of Mars atmosphere is and what the rocks were made from, it was understood then that some meteorites that have been collected on Earth were actually from Mars. And not only that, that recently arrived ones amongst that discovery, which shows that there is still debris from the Martian sculpting arriving on Earth. What would this sculpting have looked like from the surface of Earth? Mars was the archetype of the warrior hero. The reason for that was that in this electrical environment, it was traveling between Venus and the Earth repeatedly. So would retreat along the rotation axis of all the objects in this line and it would move up towards Venus. Venus at that time was discharging in a greenish color, interestingly enough, but Mars with its red color was obvious. As it moved up towards Venus, it would sit within the green ring of Venus as if it was an eye with a red pupil. 
When it approached the Earth, there would be electrical activity which would make Mars move away back down the column towards the Earth. And as it approached the Earth, it became gigantic and it was a threat to the Earth. Its appearance as it got close enough was such that material being removed from the surface of Mars electrically would descend towards the Earth. And looking up at this descending material, it looked like a red dagger. So that globally you will see images of Mars and you will also uh, hear references to the sword of Mars. Well, what was the sword of Mars? It was this appendage of material, dust and gases, stretching towards the Earth, towards the northern pole, it seems. According to the ancient sources, a towering, gigantic tornado or hurricane descended from Mars uh, with disastrous effects. This wasn't a two-day phenomenon. This was a phenomenon that lasted for months, if not years. So it was remembered as a tremendous hurricane in the sky that circled around as a giant corkscrewing like serpent and affected a disaster. But at the same time, that same entity was looked upon as the single leg of heaven and or as the world pillar-like structure that actually supported heaven. In order for all those different thematic patterns to be associated with it, it had to be a sustained phenomenon, you know, to allow that many different symbols to originate in the first place, which would be visualized as a towering structure spanning the circumpolar sky above the earth. Virtually every culture on the earth commemorated that mountain in their monumental structures. The Maya pyramids, for example, are called mountains. The pyramids of Egypt certainly would fall into that. The Babylonian ziggurats were certainly identified as a mountain. And those mountains were ascribed the exact same characteristics as the mountain in the sky. So they did not distinguish between the two entities. That mountain on the earth was the mountain in heaven. And probably the best example of that is the ziggurats in Mesopotamia. They typically included a bull's like horn on the top of the ziggurat. And they compared that to the shining horns in heaven. We all are familiar with those ancient pictographs of the sun that we've been talking about. They will always have the sun setting within a crescent-like horn. And so when that world mountain is putting a, a single set of horns on its apex, it is literally commemorating the horns that they saw in the sky, the Twin Peaked Mountain. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.